So today it was time to drive five miles to the border, leave Albania and go into Macedonia. Our first stop was the famous St. Gnomes Monastery, which is five kilometers inside Macedonia. St. Gnome was the guy who helped create the Cyrillic alphabet, which is the basis for Russian and all Slavic languages. So we couldn't wait to see what was a renowned beauty spot. We're in Macedonia and it reminds me a lot of Slovenia. And we'll come to St. Gnome's Man Monastery, which is his burial place. And it's where a lot of people go swimming. It's clearly not a religious place. I'll just turn this around. Clearly we lost. We didn't get the bring your bathing suit men memo. I've never been to a monastery where you can get your kit off before. But this is it. The gift shops and the boat rides on the Holy Springs reminded me of being at the Vatican, which was just one money making opportunity. But you couldn't dispute how stunningly beautiful this place was. Boat. Are you rowing, Scott? Are you're rowing. rowing all these people. Are they paying me? How yeah. much they pay me? I do not. Uh, do you know my hourly rate? Uh, go on. How much? Uh, minimum 5,000 euros an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Trevi fountaining this? Go on. You throw it over the back of your head and I don't know. <laughs> Most tourists come to St. Gnome's Monastery on a boat from Orhid or they catch a bus up. This is one of the must-see places in Macedonia, so it's always extremely busy. St. Gnome founded this monastery on the shores of Lake Orhid in 905 and died in 910. He was the first native Bulgarian saint ever created. He also worked with Cyril and Methodus to create the Cyrillic language, which is the basis of all Slavic languages. What an incredibly beautiful resting place. But let's have a look inside. Wow. honestly say so. we've seen um, a lot of world heritage sites and a lot of churches on our little European tour that is probably my favorite church um, even though it's in a bad state of disrepair in terms of the art on the walls um, it's badly degraded it's it's just the love that they created it with and, and the time that they put into it he must have been very special to them but that was Honestly, I think my favorite monastery we visited, and we visited some pretty cool ones. Small, perfectly formed. After visiting the monastery, we took a drive out to Orhid, which although only 25 kilometers away due to the state of the roads, took another hour to visit. However, on the way, we did get to see the very cool site of the Bay of Bones. is the Gulf of Bones and this is um, how they used to live so you see the little village it's on stilts and they've recreated it and these date back to 5,000 years ago to the Bronze Age they're absolutely incredible and you can dive down there and pick up Bronze Age relics so we got parked up um, parking was interesting, a bit difficult to find, but we got street parking and a little man comes and he SMSs your details into the system and then it's about 80 cent an hour. So that side of town is the new side and it's kind of ugly and communist boxes. And then this side 
is the old town and so we'll find the interesting buildings and everything else because when this place was settled by the Ottomans when they took it over they made all of the Christians live um, inside the city walls up on that hill up there which I think is well a lot of other people executed them so they let them live there Arad is known as the town of 365 churches it was also known as the Jerusalem of the Balkans now it doesn't have 365 churches anymore, a lot of those were destroyed over the many years but there are all kinds of places of worship as you go along and some of the churches hold as few as five people and in this particular case it's a church by a cafe, it's just here. But that's a place of worship, that's my first town centre place of worship. who this dude is but he has the whole place in his hands which is a symbol he's a benefactor or very important and he has shiny toes so clearly they think touching him does something good dress for winter because it's cold and it's summer what temperature is it uh possibly 18 or 19 18 or 19 wow do you like it being a bit chillier than Athens would you rather be like 40 degrees at the Parthenon I think I would rather be like mid 20s all right just never happy so there's only one major stopping street and it's with this one and this is a bizarre area so we'll go have a look at that later um other things to buy here are the pearls which only two families in the whole of the Orid area know how to make and they basically I'll take you to show you how that works what else is there we can see the amphitheater we can see several of the different churches including St. Sophia's and John's um, and the old houses I think that's it hello guys so as Alexander said earlier cash is king here in Macedonia so I went and got some uh, money out this is the the Dana or the dinner Dana um, they go the opposite of Serbia, so I think that Serbia was Derby, and this is uh, not Derby, Adena. So this is a thousand note, which today, which is 2022, that equals about 15 euros, and the 500 equals about. I'm looking away because I'm thinking about eight euros. So about 16 euros to eight and eight euros. So. Um, Cash King, you need to get it out. It did, I don't think it charged me a fee though, which is great. And then I arrive at the coffee bar, and the price is a lot different than Albania. Um, you're going to probably pay around about three euros for a coffee, which is all right. Um, but it's not Albania prices. So there we go. So, guys, something I've noticed about both Macedonia and Albania is when we come out in the morning, we always come out and try and look for a coffee. And yeah, of course, we get coffee. The, usual coffee but usually you get a coffee and a snack you know like maybe a croissant a muffin but everywhere it's just drinks and nothing else that is something i've really learned over the last couple of days you know we were looking for we didn't want to go out for lunch yesterday we didn't want something big but we also didn't want to starve there's absolutely nothing inside the drink it's drinking nothing and it seems the same way uh, in macedonia here today oh so guys what are you up to alexandra i am I decided to plan the route once we got here. So we found a cafe with Wi-Fi and I looked at the signposts and I looked at the top 10 list of things to do here and I quickly plotted as a route. So I will screenshot and share this as my top route of things to see. So we will walk for 34 minutes, 2.5 kilometers and in that time we will see Old Bazaar Street, Holy Mary Plebitos, which is one of the churches I recommend. The Upper Gate, which is also the Old Wall. The Amphitheatre, the Church of St. John, which is the main thing you want to see because that is where they do all the shots for the guidebooks and everything. And finally, we will see St. Sophia's Church. And one for Thea, I thought you might want to go to the National Workshop of Papermaking. So, how do you feel about the idea of going to the National Papermaking Museum? Well, I thought you'd be excited. I'm just gonna, you know, I know how to make the paper airplanes. I know how to make, well, a bit 
Okay, no, no, this isn't the National Origami Workshop. Making paper, how you make paper. You just cut trees. Don't, no. Alexander, what yeah. are the top three things to do in Macedonia? Top three, quickly. Oh, in Macedonia, I honestly don't know. Because no, I'm no, I mean, in, I mean in Orhid, Macedonia. Oh, oh, her, oh, Orhid. Orhid. Yeah, horrid, red. If you think of horrid, but the opposite. Orid, so what's your top three things? Um, you want to see the set, the Church of Saint Sophia for sure, because that is the pat she is the patron saint of this whole area. I think you want to go and find the pearls on Bazaar Street and learn how they are made, because it's an ancient, um, very historic, and it's a secret smuggled in by the Jews. And finally, I think you want to go to Saint John's Church just for the views. And that is what I would do here. So I'll tell you we'll get views of the lake, yeah, Yeah, we'll get views of lake or Mountains. grid. Saying these are the orange pearls, but I'm going to be honest, it would be very difficult to tell. Well, obviously, these are completely fake, but it's going to be very difficult to work out what the real ones are. So, the two families in the whole of the orange area who have the secret to taking um, pearls and then creating them into real pearls, and it's done by painting on this secret ingredient eight times and then it creates what would happen when a pearl is normally made over heaps of time inside the shell. So these are said to be the real pearls but it would be really really hard to know if they actually are. Orange pearls look more like that, they're not pure round pearls. Put your sensible shoes on time. with a QR code. Yes. Here is Mary Blop. Apologies Mary, I've forgotten your name. But in the back is a Samuel Fortress. That's a most spectacular view. Yes. Scott's currently wondering why I've dragged him all the way up here. Uh -huh. As always, I dragged him up there so we could see the frescoes and oh my goodness me, they did not disappoint. Dating back to the beginning of the 13th century, these were in incredibly good order and actually, of all the churches we visited in Orid, these were by far the best, so do not miss out this church. Alexandra might seem out of breath here, but you know, she um, has some health issues, but if you're relatively fit, and Alexandra is relatively fit, just not today, you from the top is but we should really be going up to that castle but maybe we don't push her as much but definitely worth the walk so it turns out you can park up here and this is the old town entrance only for special people so that must be us so on our European road trip, we've done amphitheatres of Philonopolis, Hieropolis, Flopidopidopolis, the Parthenon, Dionysus' theatre. This actually is one with the best view. I actually like this one. Um, and they're still doing shows in it because of the acoustic value. And the best of all, you can catch this on the walk up to Samuel's Fortress so you don't have to Dancing queen. go. Dancing are you performing? I told you about churches all over the place. And you just have to keep an eye out for them. Even like in, private churches. Like even in shops they have them. They do. It's weird. Or the cute little hippie churches. Feast time, it's Greek salad in hot red and tavuk garuch, which is white beans. That's Hawaii toast, 
and then mussels. Yummy, 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 yummy. These are green tip mussels, so they probably come straight out the lake. They are honestly a little bit tough. I don't know whether that's a restaurant or here. Tavuk garuk, which comes in a tavaf, which is a which is this pot. And you it's wait. basically white beans and a mmm. You wait till the wind later. Mystery Jesus. sauce. So it's time to visit St. Sophia's Church. St. Sophia was a second century woman who was dragged before the Emperor Hadrian with her three daughters aged 9, 10 and 12 and her daughters were tortured and executed in front of her because they were Christians and after she buried her daughter she died of a broken heart and this is one of the many churches built in her honour and her memory. And um, this is one of the most famous sites of northern Macedonia as well. This is built in the 9th and 10th century, but churches have been here since the 1st century. So, go in and see it. So we did St. Sophia's Church, and if I'm honest, I've seen far better. Um, most of the artwork's been destroyed. There's no representations really of Sophia, and if you want to see Byzantine art, that is not the church to go in. Like the other church that we went to was really nice. It it had the old paintbrush on it, but it was a bit. Yeah. Like, it told a story. Google didn't foresee this. Google would have had me walking in the lake. Crazy. This is Saint John K Neo which is one of the most photographed sites of Northern Macedonia. And there is another church. How cute. Here is North Macedonia's most photographed. This church is one of North Macedonia's most photographed sites. From the views, you can really tell why. You come and you pose here. Come on, Thea. Drop a hip. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Work it. Work it. Come on, Scott. We want your best IG pose. So if you run out of cash, you can pay in euros or other cash. Because cash is cash. Cash is cash. They quite frankly... Do not care how they get their money, so any denomination of any different currencies, all even makes, coins, even coins, which is pretty rare, isn't it? Because normally you can't exchange coins. Balkan countries, what's so bothered? And that was off grid. I think I'm personally going to say I think I've been very spoiled because we've travelled to some of the most amazing places in Europe on a little road trip, and so off grid. Um, maybe wasn't all that it was described to be, in my view. What did you think? All right, um, I thought it was all right. It's a ringing endorsement. And That's what Thea thinks of it, because she's leaving. She loved it. No way. <laughs> so that is the reaction to, oh, red. <laughs> it wasn't horrid. Wind. This is definitely um, an enhancement to the good old wind out of your backside. <laughs> is that because
because you've had muscles as well. I'm not talking about me. I can handle the wind. If you can't handle your wind. Oh my, no, it's, I can't handle your wind. This is toxic. Like, toxic. It's like it house is. trumpets. Toxic. Do I look like the type of guy who would have toxic wind? Yes. Comment in the comment box below, please. Yeah.